Yo, what's up? Hey, Jux, Bone Writer. I just wanted to document a little bit of my time in this quarantine. Just to uh, document my life and what I'm doing in this current time. So far, I think it's around three weeks and I've been outside about four times to the supermarket. I, I go literally across the road to the in-laws for lunch. Apart from that, I'm just stuck in the house all the time. It's terrible, man. I mean, I think all the time that you, you want to be creative, but not being able to be creative because the time you have to spend locked inside doors. Right now, where I live, there's a situation where one person from every household can go out every two days to buy food. So literally stuck and not being able to go out. Which, believe me, I think is a good thing. At least the virus can't spread. However, it does make you a prisoner in your own home. And that is is not nice at all, believe me. I have been passing time. I've been doing some videos, some editing. Uh, I've been creating. I've started painting a laptop. Wait a minute, I'll show you. It's coming along. It'll take a little while. As you can see, there's a drip. And the drip goes through my name into a, a, a transparent spray can. And this is just basically me saying what life I have goes into my art. <laughs> uh, I've been painting some lens caps. I've done like two or three of these just to uh, decorate my cameras and stuff and uh, give me something to do. Also painted a denim jacket. Wait a moment. When I can actually go outside and purchase things, I'll get some top coat just to make that clear and protected. I hate being stuck in the house, you know. I've got boxes of paint stored. I've got bags of paint in my bike ready to go and paint. Just can't get out, you know. Sad but true. For me, the situation is a little different because um, at the beginning of December, although this, this virus was starting, I was actually in Shanghai because I had to renew my passport. So I had to go to um, the British passport and visa office in Shanghai. And of course it was the Chinese New Year, the Spring Festival. So it was going to be delayed anyway. The day before the Spring Festival is when places start getting locked down. And, you know, the embassy was closed for one week anyway, so I couldn't get my passport. The Chinese government actually have, have sent us lots of, like, information about the virus, uh, about safety. And every day I have to inform my workplace that I'm safe. And, um, yeah, I, I would say the contact I've had from the Chinese government has actually been quite good because when I wrote to the embassy because I found out that my passport had arrived back in China on the 23rd of um, January so it actually took less than two weeks for my passport to to get back well just over two weeks to get back to Shanghai but here the British visa office were on holiday so I emailed them many, many times, the emergency teams, and they're just saying, we're closed, can't help you. We're closed, can't help you. Now, my visa expired yesterday, and I have been told by the Chinese passport and um, visa office not to worry because I can't travel to Shanghai to collect my passport. I'll not get fined for overstay. So I have to say that from the Chinese side, They've actually been better than the British side because Britain has not 
sent me an email, not a call, nothing, asking if I'm okay. They advise everybody on TV to go home, go back to Britain. And yet I wrote and told them, you have my passport. And I just get an automated email. So the British government actually act like they're doing something, but not at all. Because they did not respond, because they didn't contact me, I'm now a visa overstayer. And again, in China, they've said it's okay, no problem. <laughs> but Britain, acting all nice and, you know, wonderful, we care about our citizens. No offence, but it's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Trips out to the supermarket have been crazy. It started at first with all the, the dried noodles or instant noodles all sold out. Then the bread and then vegetables. I mean, there's literally not even one potato. Very strange. And because generally Chinese people don't eat carrots like we do in the West. You can find some carrots, but that's about the only vegetable you can get. It's the time. That's the problem. It's the time. You would think having so much time, you would get creative. But the lack of motivation just eats that time. And you go get up in the morning, you do what you do. You go to sleep. And I found I'm sleeping two or three hours later because my mind's not stimulated. So I'm sleeping less and I'm thinking more. I mean, it must be terrible for the people of Wuhan who... I mean, they've been on lockdown before everybody else. And that really is the epicenter. Where I am, a couple of provinces over, is... It is quite safe because it's a small city. There's only 4 million people here, which is nothing in China. But still, it's monotonous. It's crazy. I mean, I do like the quiet, believe me. I'm not a people person anyway. So to have more quiet is, is wonderful. I mean, occasionally you get some old popo, an old grandma outside, you know, doing some exercise without a mask. Believe that. You know, but again, it's a small city and there's been very few infections here. Thank God. It's strange because we hear lots of rumours and you can see things online or whatever. But speculating on that, was true or false or whatever, it means nothing to us now. You know, there's nothing we can do. People can go online and complain and I've heard rumours about that too. What matters is, is that we've got to occupy our time. We have to try just to get along with it. However shit that is I mean my son he's 12 and it must be so bad for him you know kids are very active it doesn't matter where the kids from kids are active kids always want to do something but for him he's just stealing my iPad Pro now and playing games or doing his homework because schools now have started to give students homework which is good, occupies them and it keeps them in the habit of learning. I mean, my boy's a good boy anyway. And <laughs> his mum don't like him playing games though, of course. A tiger mummy. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I had a chat with Brim um, from the tax crew and I've been talking with like many friends, uh, Jinx, uh, making plans for later in the year you know we have to try and look past this time because this time it's just, it's just not fun i want to get to a wall i want to paint i mean anybody who knows me i live for painting that that's what i do that's who i am a born writer you know but anyway i just wanted to drop this and and let you all know what i'm doing first time i'm on, I'm on camera you know so <laughs> my man id uh, in jersey he wants me to make some tutorials to help him out um, learning how to paint and I'll do that and I want to do more and be more active this year and more you know 
I want people to, to understand me and what I do. Many people think I look rough and I'm an introvert. So I don't openly communicate with people. But I think, I think in this day and age, you have to communicate. People have to understand you. And that's what I'm going to try to sort out. So anyway, <laughs> this is a thing, right? If you're watching this and you want me to sketch your name, I can make a video and sketch your name. Leave a message, right? And I'll, I'll do your name. Just give me something to do, please. <laughs> please. Anyway, that's what's happening for me right now. So I'll, uh, yeah. You'll see me soon. I won't see you soon. You know what I'm saying? Just remember, stay up. Peace.